Uh, my presentation is titled Towards Industrial Roll to Roll Production of Nano Fibre Related Cellulose Film. So let's take a first a quick view of what nanocellulose really is. I think most of you are familiar with this, but just a quick, quick view. Uh, nanocellulose can be made from various plant based materials, from wood. Obviously, what we are using is birch based um, pulp. And there could be also other sources such as straw and some um, other plant plant based sources. But if you look at the um, picture above, you will see that the um, there's a uh, semantic picture of a fiber wall, and the fiber wall is consisted of fibrils. And what we are doing is that we are using mechanical force to break down the fibers and the fiber walls, and to uh, um, break them down down to a fibril level. And here are different kind of uh, nanocellulose qualities. We are mainly focused on the right hand side on the nanofibrillated and microfibrillated cellulose scale. So um, our overall dimensions are mostly in micro scale, but there is also some um, fine structures that are in nanoscale also. And we have two type of equipment that we are now using to make our um, nanocellulose material. They both are based on mechanical methods. Uh, the first one is called Masuko Super Mass Collider and the uh, another equipment is called Microfluidix fluidix Fluidizer which is actually a sophisticated version of a homogenation um, equipment for example what is used in milk production to break down grease particles in milk. And the uh, basic principle of that Masuko grinder is that there are two grinding stones. Uh, one is rotating one and one is stationary. And we are forcing fibers through those um, gap between the stones. And when we do it enough, the fibers are grinded down into nanoscale. And in the um, microfluidix processor, we are using a uh, speed pressure and um, change in flow geometry to break down the fibers down to a nano scale level. And if you look at the pictures below, on the left hand side you will see untreated fibers. And in the uh, picture in the middle, those fibers have been now treated with Masuko grinder. And the scale on the pictures is the same. So you can really see the change that is happening on the fibers. And on the picture on the right hand side, there is a finished nan nanocellulose uh, which is about in consistency of two percent and you can see how gel like that structure really is. Uh, nanocellulose has um, quite many properties and those properties can be um, utilized in various types of applic applications but I think the uh, most important ones uh, are the uh, high strength and high high models of the nanocellulose. It's lightweight, and there's also um, what is not can be, cannot not be found in paper products is that can be it can be optical transparent once it's so tightly bound bound structure. And also it has a very stable um, structure in terms of uh, moisture, so it doesn't absorb a lot of moisture. So these. Um, good properties can be used, for example, in composites as a strengthening agent, um, in pulp and paper production as strengthening agents, or, for example, in paint industry as uh, rheology modifiers and so on. But I think, as we are now talking about NFC film, one very promising application could be printed electronics. So let's take a closer look at that. Um, here again, I have listed some of the uh, nanocellulose properties, which would be good considering the uh, electronic applications. So it has a quite high strength and high strength modulus. And using a very simple chemistry, we can make the nanocellulose films also very flexible, so they are durable while we are printing them. And considering scintration process, which plastic is not very, um, good at necessarily. We can use higher sintering temperatures, for example, sintering uh, silver or copper based inks. And one great um, property is also that nanocellulose is 
by nature optically transparent and I'm sorry for translucent and we can make it uh, by using very simple methods optically completely transparent so though from those properties the application side would be concentrating on for example on flexible displays OLED displays and other types of print printable electronics so the way that we are making those our um, NFC films is based on a filed patent which was uh, filed during the NASEVA-1 project, tailoring of nanocellular structures for industrial applications. And the uh, film preparation is done here at VTT Espo using our surface treatment concept, which is actually a flexible modular bucket scale pilot concept where we can build our own um, coding equipment and pretty much uh, organize and change and do pretty much what we want with the coding line. And traditionally, the uh, NFC films have been done using a filtering method. So, um, as you know, nanocellulose pins high amount of water, and it's quite hard to evaporate all that water by using drying. So it has been done by uh, pressurized filtering, but that may require several hours of dewatering time. And there might be, once you do it on a um, filter or a membrane, there will be always at least some kind of marking on the bottom of that um, film. So it is not completely uh, smooth, the surface after, after making. And um, you can maybe ease up the um, dewatering by adding some filler component into your nanocellulose, but once you add filler, you will lose all the uh, optical transparency and translucency from the film. So what we have done is that we have coated nanocellulose or microfiber-related cellulose evenly on a plastic support, and we can control pretty much the layer thickness of that film as we wish. We, during drying, we also control the adhesion and drying, and by controlling the um, adhesion to our plastic support, the um, nanocellulose film does not shrink during drying, so it means that there will be no wrinkles in the film once it's finished. And also the smooth surface of that uh, um, support that we are putting our NFC on will be copied on the NFC film, so there is no problem of the uh, filter marking. So here are some prelim prelim preliminary results of our N N NFC film properties. We have used now electronic printing and um, it's the film shows excellent print qualities and there is no print through as thin as 20 micron thick film. Um, the film is transparent and you can, be made, can, can be made transparent by using very simple chemistry which can be applied online quite easily and there's also a benefit that we don't have to make the whole film completely transparent. Uh, we can print transparent spots and leave the uh, other parts of the film only translucent so we'll get also an effect from that. Uh, now we have reached the trying times of about 15 minutes so it doesn't mean that we can run 1000 meters per minute as on a paper machine but it in our opinion, it would be already an, an industrial process if we are considering a couple of 10 meters per minute. And also one benefit as bio-based uh, film is that the uh, NFC film has excellent oxygen trans transmission rates, which can be further enhanced using our atomic layer deposition technology, which my colleague Jenny Sievan and will tell more about. And if we skip the next slide. Here you can see a semantic presentation of our surface treatment concept SUTCO and how those uh, nanocellulose films are made. So if we start from the uh, left side, first we pre-treat our plastic substrate by using corona or plasma treatment to adjust the uh, properties of the base to uh, the uh, nanocellulose that we are using. Uh, we are coding then coating the uh, NFC film on our plastic substrate, and we may, might need some pretreatment of our N NFC, maybe adding a special softener, or s s maybe a little heat warming up to um, ease the uh, evaporation during drying. 
And after coating, we try it, and then we delaminate it from the plastic film. And the plastic film can be reused and recycled, so we don't lose that, and it can be used again. And then to finish off our um, film, we press it to make it more dense and more even, and to uh, finish it off to be a good product. So, thank you on my behalf.